Mark Rodiger is scientific director of the Center for UFO Studies, a group of scientists, academics, and investigators interested in promoting serious scientific interest in UFOs. He argues that Project Mogul is one more ploy to misinform the public about Roswell. There is no way that the amount of material in a Mogul balloon would fill up the area as described by the witnesses on the Roswell debris field. Now, right there, that's enough for me. Even though Rodiger doubts that the MJ-12 documents are authentic, he believes it is possible that aliens did crash near Roswell. And he disputes Weaver's assumption that anyone would mistake a crash balloon for an alien spacecraft. People found Mogul balloons out there all the time. In fact, Mogul balloons often had out written on them who to return it to. In July 1995, nearly a year after the release of Weaver's report, the General Accounting Office completes its inquiry into government records regarding Roswell. The GAO concludes, in part, that the year-long investigation has found two records from 1947 that acknowledge a crash. Both claim the object was a balloon. The report finds no other records of a crash near Roswell. UFO researchers may be disappointed, but not surprised. They didn't try to determine whether the Roswell event was real. They simply looked for existing records, and they basically could find almost nothing. Rodiger argues that the General Accounting Office lacks the muscle to make the FBI, CIA, or any other agency turn over top-secret files. What is indisputable is that the GAO inquiry does reveal one suspicious fact. Many records at the Roswell Army Airfield from 1947, permanent records that were supposed to be preserved, had been destroyed years before. Is this evidence of a government cover-up? What the General Accounting Office discovered, this is an amazing thing, was that all outgoing messages from Roswell Army Airfield from the middle of night from early 1946 to the end of 1949 were inexplicably missing they were just gone these documents are the only hard evidence that an elite government committee called the majestic 12 ever existed skeptics say they are fraudulent but ufo researchers believe other records could have confirmed the existence of the mj12 they say those documents may have been destroyed as part of a government cover-up. Jamie Chandore and William Moore, the original recipients of the documents, no longer comment publicly on the Majestic 12. But in an email to the History Channel, Moore said that if the documents are a hoax, he suspects it was perpetrated to discredit Roswell investigators. Fellow researchers agree. One of the key questions you have to ask yourself about these documents is, did somebody manufacture them? Are they all fake? And you have to say, well, why fake them? What's the motivation for faking them? Is it to fool the UFO community? Ah, oh, nobody cares about the UFO community. Is it to make fame and fortune? Nobody's made any fame and fortune out of it. The answer could be it's government disinformation of the most insidious kind to take us off the path of what could be the truth. In fact, UFO researchers' quest for the truth about Roswell and Operation Majestic 12 may be hopelessly compromised by the intense secrecy of the Cold War era. If you take yourself back to 1947, the Cold War was just beginning with the Soviets. Uh, it was a time when uh, we had lots of secrets we were keeping and, and more secrets were going to be kept as years went by. In December 1947, five months after the Roswell incident, the Air Force did establish a secret committee staffed by elite scientists and military officers. That operation eventually became known as Project Blue Book. Headquartered at Patterson Field in Ohio, its mission was to investigate all reported UFO sightings and determine if they pose a threat to national security. UFO reports could clog reporting channels for military communications and so forth, and the Soviets could use it for deception operations. The government decided that UFO sightings had to be explained at all costs, and that UFO reports had to be debunked. But to some, Blue Book's very existence validated claims that alien spacecraft may have been credible. In 1969, after a 22-year tenure, Blue Book was terminated.
Air Force officials deny that extraterrestrial aircraft were ever found. Some UFO researchers are not surprised, since they claim Project Blue Book was never meant to expose the truth about UFOs. It wasn't some kind of deep black deception. It was instead a very open deception, if, you, if you, we can put it that way, a public relations effort to convince the public there was nothing to UFOs. In the years since a mysterious roll of film brought the Majestic 12 controversy to light, Roswell, New Mexico has become an iconic place in American culture. Whether or not an alien spaceship really crashed there almost seems beside the point. But the debate over the authenticity of the MJ-12 documents rages on. Do these papers open a Pandora's box of nefarious government secrets? Are they fakes that merely showcase the handiwork of a determined con artist? Or is there a third option? That the documents are part of an elaborate government-sponsored disinformation campaign designed to keep Americans in the dark about UFOs. Some people say, oh, that's a crude hoax. Well, if it's a hoax, it sure ain't crude. Those documents are quite sophisticated. I mean, there's a lot of information in those documents that when they came out, in 1984, in the form of a, a canister film, were not known or widely understood at the time. I've now been to 20 different document archives across the country. I get a real kick out of the people who say, this document must be phony. They say it from their armchair instead of going to the archives and finding other documents with the same idiosyncrasies. But despite the efforts of some UFO researchers to have the MJ-12 documents taken seriously, Richard Dolan insists that the existence of MJ-12 doesn't necessarily hinge on their validity. You look at the MJ-12 documents, and to accept them blindly as real, I think, is premature. On the other hand, I think that there is reason to consider them valid. I do. I would argue that however one perceives the, the, uh, the authenticity of those documents, that uh, it is entirely logical and likely that an MJ-12 type of group did indeed exist. Skeptics say that UFO researchers have engendered a debate based on spurious logic and flimsy evidence. And in doing so, they've behaved at best irresponsibly. I think the public should be outraged over MJ-12. It was not just a fun and games, but it's caused a lot of people to um, distrust the American government. It's caused people to sus have suspicions about historical figures that are unjustified. In June 2004, New Mexico Governor Bill Richardson said that the official investigations have never adequately explained the crash near Roswell he called for a full disclosure of what the government knows. Will another inquiry reveal the MJ-12 documents to be proof of one of the greatest government cover-ups of all time? Or will it perpetuate the public's willingness to believe? The preceding program presented theories about an historical event that is shrouded in mystery. It contained archival footage, reenactments, and dramatizations, which invite you, the viewer, to draw your own conclusions. It happened before, but what if, right now, a Category 3 hurricane were to hit one of the world's most heavily populated cities? The chances of this storm happening soon are very real. Mega Disasters, New York City Hurricane, tonight at 9 on the History Channel. It could happen here.